uh, any scholarly thoughts or beliefs that the Gospels may have been written to counter Paul's teachings, especially as Jesus talks about watching out for false prophets and fulfilling the laws rather than abolishing them. It seems pretty clear that Luke was not written to oppose Paul because Luke sees Paul as his hero in his second volume, the book of Acts. The Gospel of Mark seems to embody Paul's theology of Jesus' death and resurrection. The Gospel of Matthew is the interesting one because Matthew, in Matthew and only in Matthew, Jesus insists that his followers, to be true followers of his, have to keep the law. He not only says that no part of the law, not the smallest part of the law, will pass away until all is fulfilled, he tells his followers they have to keep the law uh, down to the very fine details. In fact, they have to keep the law better than the scribes and the Pharisees. So this is one of those things that I questioned when I was a, a Christian and I was coming out of Christianity. Matthew clearly states that those who follow Jesus are supposed to follow the law. They're supposed to follow the commandments. That he did not come to absolve you of the law, but to fulfill the law. And you're supposed to continuously participate in the practices based on the law and the commandments. Now, Jesus was a practicing Jew. So that would mean he's talking about those laws from the Old Testament. The laws of not wearing mixed linen. The laws of the commandments and not working on the Sabbath and honoring your mother and father, not coveting. The other commandments of the dietary regime. How you're, what you're supposed to eat and what you're not supposed to eat. Also, the laws of governing a, a daughter and how she is to be treated, whether she's married, betrothed, if she's treated harmfully by a man and then he pays the bride price if she's sexually assaulted. The laws that govern um, if, if a husband thinks that his wife is cheating on him and uh, the little mixture is supposed to put together in order to see if she has a miscarriage or not, you're supposed to follow those laws. You're supposed to follow all the festive holiday laws where you sacrifice all these animals for this deity and for atonements and things of that nature. You're also supposed to follow the laws of how you make someone a priest with the blood on the earlobes and the splashing of blood on the altars. You're supposed to still continue with those laws because that's what Jesus is talking about in Matthew 25. And those were the things that were still going on. And according to the Old Testament, these are supposed to be done in, perpetu in perpetuity. So they're not supposed to stop, which is why Jesus said he's not taking away from any of those things. Now, a person is going to say that we're saved by grace, that we don't have to keep all those things anymore. Well, that would go against Matthew. So either the rest of the New Testament or any part of the New Testament where you can find that and you suggest that that's what it's talking about, then you have to say Matthew is then wrong. But if Matthew is wrong, then that's not the inerrant word of God because one has to be wrong, one has to be right. And if Matthew is right, then that would make any verse that you say you don't have to follow the law wrong. So it can't work both ways. You have to pick. Now, of course, you're going to pick the one that fits our culture today. Christian culture today would not allow for you to sacrifice animals in the church, splash blood on the altars, put blood on the new priest. It won't allow those things. It won't allow for you to force your daughters to marry a man that sexually assaulted her if she wasn't betrothed to another man. You wouldn't follow those laws today. Although we did have one guy on the live who said he would. But for the most part, you wouldn't follow those laws and it would be illegal. So you wouldn't do those things. So the question begs, are you truly a follower of Jesus or not? Because according to Matthew, if you're truly a follower of Jesus, you have to follow the law better than the Pharisees and the Sadducees and everybody else, to which I don't see any Christians following that. 
which I guess goes to the part where Jesus said, many will do miracles in my name and heal people in my name and they will call upon my name, but I will not know them because you're not following what he said in Matthew. And since Matthew was written before Luke and Acts and John, and all those only, only other book that wasn't written before that was Mark. And that was only a scrap that they found. But since all those other ones written after Matthew, then you have to give Matthew more authority than you would give the Luke's and John's and all the letters of Paul. So are you going to follow the law and be a real Christian, which really you're like supposed to be kind of, that will make you a Jewish Christian? Or are you going to follow your culture and continue to make the religion, make the scripture fit your culture, your mindset? And have that cognitive dissonance of your bias. These things are ancient religion for ancient people. They are not meant for today. So Y'all have a great day. Remember always, you have to free yourself to be yourself. Because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey, good vibrations.